Hello there, my lovely livers. I hope everybody is feeling well today. Today we are going to discuss the difference between compensated and decompensated cirrhosis. And it's actually a really good distinction to know because it's going to really help you gauge where you are at in your liver disease journey. So stay tuned. I'm going to break down the differences as well as give you some tips for getting yourself on the right track at the end of this video. Stay tuned. Welcome back. As somebody who's had a diagnosis of cirrhosis since late 2021, I know how absolutely terrifying it is in the beginning when you have zero idea what any of these terms mean and you have no idea what is happening to your body. Well, I'm here to help you explain everything to you. I believe knowledge is power. So I want you to walk away from this video feeling empowered and knowing exactly what it is and the whys behind what you are currently going through. Decompensated and compensated cirrhosis is our subject for today. These are actually the two main stages of cirrhosis. So with compensated, which comes before decompensated, your liver is still functioning. You are doing well. You are not showing any outward symptoms of cirrhosis. Um, you will maybe still be getting fatigue, maybe have, you know, that pain occasionally in the right hand side, but you're not on any medications. You're not getting procedures done regularly. And you're probably only seeing your doctor maybe once every six months or once a year. So that is compensated cirrhosis. You do not show any signs of having cirrhosis at all. Decompensated cirrhosis, on the other hand, is where things start to get more advanced. This is the patient who is showing all of the outward symptoms of cirrhosis. The main symptoms that you will see in somebody with decompensated cirrhosis is ascites. Ascites is when the abdomen fills up with fluid. Number two are varices. Varices are enlarged blood vessels in the esophagus and the stomach that result from too much pressure in the veins because the liver cannot process everything. So those blood vessels, they get engorged with blood and if they burst, that can cause internal bleeding. Number three, jaundice, which is the yellowing of the skin or the eyes. And lastly, number four, hep hepatic encephalopathy, which that is a buildup of ammonia in the bloodstream, which can cause confusion. It can cause shaking. It can cause personality changes and can lead to coma. All right, so remember at the beginning of this video when I told you there were some ways that you could actually get yourself back to compensated from decompensated? Well, here they are. Number one, no booze, zero alcohol, nada, zip, zero alcohol. No alcohol will ever be in your life again now that you have liver disease. You will never get away from decompensated cirrhosis and worse if you are still consuming alcohol. It just, it has to go bye-bye. It is pouring gasoline on a big old dumpster fire. It is not smart at all. Number two, a healthy liver diet. A healthy liver diet basically consists of low sodium, high protein, fruits and vegetables and lean meats, no preservatives, no preservatives, that's it. Uh, those are just chemicals that your liver has to process. And what we are trying to do right now is give our liver as little work as possible to do. So those are the four basics of a liver friendly diet. Number three, stay as active as you can. I know it's so hard in the beginning. You may have a huge belly from ascites. You may feel embarrassed from the jaundice. But you need to find a way to break down these barriers. And even if it's just walking to the mailbox or even if it's just getting up out of bed and dancing to a favorite song for a couple of minutes, it's so vitally important to keep our, our bodies as strong as possible. Number three, take all, where are we at four? I can't remember now. Take all medications as prescribed. You, when you have decompensated cirrhosis, you will definitely be on medications, which will 
most likely include diuretics and most likely include lactulose, which is a laxative and nobody likes to take it and we all want to avoid it, but you absolutely have to. It is so vitally important. So super important. Take all of your medications. And then last tip, see your doctor. Make sure you are getting to your doctor's appointments. With this disease, they can tend to be far and few between. It's a lot of, okay, absorosis. See you in six months, you know, and you feel, end up feeling kind of lost in the mix. So when you do have those doctor's appointments, take full advantage of them. Ask them as many questions as you possibly can. Advocate for yourself. I hope that that puts your mind at ease a little bit, gives you a better idea of where you are in your liver health journey. Any questions, comments, please put them down in the comment section. Please like subscribe so I can bring more videos like this to you. My goal is to educate the whole entire cirrhosis population so that we all feel empowered and we know what is going on with our bodies so we can get ourselves better. So I dearly hope you are all doing well. I am sending you love and well wishes and strength and know that you are loved and we will talk to you soon. Bye.